hang out with us today is Lindsay Schwab to walk us through the resume engine. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. So the resume engine was developed by Toyota and hiring our heroes for veterans that are currently leaving service and work on their first resume and have issues with translation. Lindsay, do you want to kind of take over and walk us through it? Sure. So um, as James mentioned, this tool is really helpful for veterans who are currently transitioning. Um, the, the military speak to civilian speak is something that a lot of veterans do have trouble with on resumes. And so we've worked with HR directors, um, a Fortune 500 companies and small businesses, uh, as well as some resume writers and consultants to actually develop language in the resume engine that will format into an automatic resume for you. Um, and it's the kind of language that HR professionals look for. It's the kind of language that automated computer systems that scan resumes uh, look for. And there's a lot of those out there now. So it's important to be able to uh, format your resume in a professional and easy to read way, and then also to use that language. Um, so let's go ahead and log into the resume engine, and we'll see how some of this works. So if you haven't created an account yet, you're going to click on Sign Up um, when you hover over your branch of service. Otherwise, you'll click on Login. And then the very first thing that you'll see, James, if you'll just click on Account Setup real quick so you get to that first page. If you're a new user, you're going to enter some, um, some of your personal information here. The first thing you're going to enter is the branch you are in, um, whether you're active or reserve and then what your rank was. Then you're going to enter some personal information, um, your name, your street address, and this is all going to go on the top of your resume. It's really important to have this information in there so that employers can contact you. Um, so that's why we ask for it. But it doesn't go anywhere besides on your resume. We've also got a little checkbox at the bottom that you can click if you want to receive. Um, we've got a series of six emails with sort of helpful follow-up tips on things like interviewing, writing your cover letter, crafting an elevator pitch, so you can check that if you want to receive those emails. When you click on Save and Continue, um, it's going to take you, James has already started filling things out, so you'll see here you can click on wherever um, your education level is. If you've gone to some college, um, you're going to click College and then enter sort of what you've completed so far. So that's what James is going to type in here. So you can see, um, let's say, Northern Virginia Community College uh, in Fairfax, Virginia. And let's say that you're working towards your associate's degree, but you've only taken a few classes so far. Um, so you can type in something like uh, two semesters or two years or whatever it is towards your degree. And it's important to put your, your degree that you're working towards in there, so you'll see that James will write his associate's degree, because that is something that employers sometimes search for on a resume. They might want to see that you have your associate's degree or you're working towards it, or your bachelor's degree. The next part is sort of the, the meat of the resume engine, and this is where you're going to enter your military job. So because James um, was in the Army, we see that it says select MOS. That's going to change based on your branch, so it'll be customized for you. You can either scroll down here or type in um, either the number of your MOS or the name of it. Because some of them have changed names over time or changed numbers over time, it's good to, to try both of them if you have some trouble finding yours. Um, so let's type in 89 Bravo, which is an ammunition specialist. And you can see that it automatically creates a civilian translation for you. So to a civilian employer with no knowledge of the military, an ammunition specialist is really confusing. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. So you can see here that um, 89 Bravo utilized software and manual records to account for mechanical equipment and responsible for safe destruction of equipment. So this is automatically created for you. Now it's not supposed to be very specific because you're going to enter some specific bullet points under here. Um, your job specific responsibilities are sort of a list of the things that you did in your role, so your day to day tasks. This is where it's good to include specific numbers. You can see here operated programs for $2 million in equipment. If you can estimate a number like that, that's perfectly fine. Um, maybe you could list a country that you went to or if you managed um, a certain number of people or a certain number of equipment items, for example, a certain number of vehicles, or here inventory control for thousands of items in Iraq. You can always click on that little red uh, minus sign on the side if you want to delete something that you've added, and you can see James has been clicking on the plus sign underneath to add new responsibilities. Uh, 
When you're done, you'll click Add to Resume, as it's prompting you to do, and you'll see Successfully Added to Resume. So if you scroll down to the bottom here, if you're unable to find your, um, your MOS or your military job, we have included an area here for you to try to write it in yourself just so that it will be on your resume and it will be formatted. Again, a lot of them have changed names or changed uh, numbers, so it can be hard to find them. So if you find something similar, you can copy and paste that and then edit the job description so it fits you better. And you can see on the bottom, um, the 89 Bravo Ammunition Specialist is on there. We can see kind of a preview of how it'll look on the resume. It won't be formatted that same way, but that's the information that'll be on there. So we'll move on and click Save and Continue. So the next section is your specialized training. This is also important to employers. They want to see that you've gone above and beyond. You weren't just in the military, but you were learning and you were working towards um, moving up and, and advancing your knowledge. So once again here, um, you can choose from the drop down. You can actually scroll through it or you can type in uh, one of the words that's in your advanced school. So uh, warrior leader course is a common one. You'll click add to resume and once again, it's going to translate it for you. So you can see that you're learning leadership skills. And then let's do explosive ordnance disposal. Um, here again, it shows it's advanced individual training. That means something to employers. They see that you're going above and beyond. And again, you see here that you've got two. You can always click to expand. Only one of them is going to be expanded at a time. And once again, you can write in a different school if your school isn't listed, because there are quite a few. Can you click on one of the tip buttons, James? So you can see here, um, for some of the, the more complicated entries, there is a description of what you're actually going to write there. So you can see, enter the description of your advanced school, and it'll give you some examples. Um, so these examples you can copy and paste and then edit them to better apply to you uh, or you can just use them for inspiration. And these tip buttons are really throughout the tool uh, next to different items. So I'll click save and continue. All right, personal skills. Um, there are a lot of skills that you learn in the military that are important to employers. Things like leadership, um, some of them will really will apply to a lot of people. Um, and most of those skills we've listed here in this first drop down. So first aid is something that many veterans know and that's important to employers. It might be something they would need to train you in and now they don't have to pay for that training, you already have it. Um, so you can go ahead and select a few different skills from the drop down. And then you can also add some other skills using the free text entry custom skills area. So it'll give you some more uh, conversational Arabic. We see there CPR. It'll give you some other examples of things you can add. And regardless of whether you enter your skills in the drop down menus on top or in the uh, free text entry on the bottom, it's going to string them all together for you on your resume. All right. And finally, we're at the awards section. This is taking a second to load. There we go. Um, this is where you're going to add the different awards that you've received. Um, this isn't going to actually translate them for you, it's just going to list them out on your resume. But here in the tool, you're going to get a neat graphic that you can include your ribbons on. You can share that on social media. Um, it's just a useful visual way to kind of represent yourself. Awards are a great conversation starter with employers. You can see here, James has searched, he's looking for the Army Commendation, um, so he searched Army Com and it popped up. You can click on it once to add it and click on it again to remove it. You can also just scroll through and search by, if you know what your ribbons look like but not what they're called, you can do it that way. And you can see that the tool is also automatically ordering the ribbons um, in the way that they would normally be racked on you. So you can add as many or as few as you want. Um, they'll all list on your resume, but only the top 15 will show on that photo. So feel free to add everything that you've got. So there you can see we've got four. Okay, so moving into kind of the civilian section. The next section is your personal summary. And this is really, really important. It can be hard to write. Um, you might need to, to take some time to really think about it. We've got six examples here to help you out. You can see in the middle of the page. Um, you might be familiar with the idea of putting an objective on a resume. A personal summary is really, um, it's like a step up from an objective. Because instead of saying 
what you want from an employer, it's telling the employer what you have to offer them. And you have a lot to offer. So to get you started with ideas, we've included, um, and again, this is directly from HR directors, a list of qualities that many employers look for. So you can see in these bullet points here, um, there's some words that are also included in the examples that James is clicking through. And this will help you um, sort of start to craft your personal summary and include some of those words in it. So we see motivated, problem solver. There's two words already in there, just in the first few, uh, few words. Demonstrated expertise or demonstrated experience is another one. Leadership, um, again, strong work ethic, high energy. And include your skills here, you know, the, the things that popped up when you entered your military job um, that automatically translated for you, some of those keywords are helpful to include here as well. Okay, the next thing, the final section is your civilian experience. This is optional, so if you don't have any civilian experience, feel free to skip it. But it is good to include it if you do have it so employers can see what else you've done um, outside of the military. Once again here, we've got the tips uh, because you're doing it yourself. So you're writing your own job description, a general description of your position. Um, you can see manage and assign responsibility, served as a team leader. Um, and the job description, again, is very general because your responsibilities are more specific. So let's fill this out with an example. So you worked at Papa John's for a couple of years, um, and let's say that you were a shift manager. If you're still in your current position, you can leave that to field blank, and on your resume, it'll just say to present. Um, so a job description for a shift manager, again, this is a very specific general description. So you led takeout, delivery, uh, cooking, and financial operations during your shift. So in this case, during the evening and closing shift. So that's going to be real general. And then again, the job specific responsibilities are where you get into the nitty gritty of what you actually did on a day to day basis. So one thing that you did, you handled financial transactions. Uh, you closed the store at the end of the day. Another thing could be managed for junior employees. So chances are that you've also managed people in your military experience, but this is a good way to show that that's carried on in your leadership experience. And then ensured a quality product and timely delivery. So again, these are all job specific responsibilities um, that are more specific than your job description. And there you can see a preview of how it'll look on the resume. So you save and continue. All right, you're pretty much done. So here you can review and edit the things that you've entered. Um, you can see here there's a green exclamation point. That means that there's something you need to check. So if you click on that, it's going to tell you there are fields blank. Um, it's a good idea to, to complete all the fields. Um, and you can see what's wrong there. And I think we probably just accidentally entered something twice. Uh, on the one underneath it, we've got two bullet points. But on that one, we have no bullet points. So if you go back and click on Edit next to uh, you can see it's going to take you right back to that section, so right back to the military job. And sure enough, you haven't added any responsibilities. Um, so that's fine. We can, we can just go back to the review and edit, or we can go ahead and add. Okay, but you can see um, this is not going to be the order um, of everything on, or this is not going to be the order of everything on the resume or how it will all look. You can just see it in the order that you entered it. So you can go back and make sure that if you have more than one military job, you've entered them all. Or if you have um, multiple specialty schools, all your awards are on here. You can see the, the uh, skills and certifications are on there, your personal summary, and your civilian work history. So once you've reviewed this and everything is where you want it to be, you'll click Preview and Download on the left. Now you're going to see what it looks like in actual resume format. So you can see that everything we've entered has been reordered. Um, your experience is ordered, is ordered chronologically. So you've got your um, Army experience on the top because it's more recent. Then you've got your Papa John's experience on the bottom because it's less recent. Your education is all together, so your civilian education is on top, and then your um, military advanced schools are underneath it. Your awards and honors and your skills. So it's all formatted for you um, in easy to read by both a human and a computer format. 
You also get a business card, um, which is really a, a contact card that you can give out to people. It's got your name, your phone number, and your email address. So just because you don't have a job yet doesn't mean that you can't hand out business cards. It's a great way for employers to remember you um, or for networking for other people that you meet. You'll be able to download your kit, um, the resume and the business card, in a PDF and a Word document format. It's going to give you both of those. So the Word document, you can go in, you can edit it, you can save multiple versions if you want. Um, and you can also email it directly. So let's say you're doing this at the library um, or at a friend's house and you don't want to save it to their computer. It'll just automatically email that kit to your email address that you signed up with. So that is the resume engine. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. And uh, so if I was going to try this out and I'm watching at home, where would I go to actually view all of this? Great question. So um, you open up the internet and go to resumeengine.org, and that'll take you directly here. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, if I have any questions, I can just leave them on this Google Plus Hangout or on the YouTube video, correct? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone.